Hello, everyone. My name is Armel Billet. I'm the product marketing manager for Atempo. I'm very pleased to welcome you for this session. Uh, we are launching a new version for Miria, which is version 4.2. Um, to present with me uh, during this webinar, I have uh, um, some of my colleagues in the product management team uh, with Renaud Bonvi, who is director of product management here. I also have uh, Mathieu de Vulder, who is technical product manager in charge of storages. And um, uh, Thibault, is, uh, Thibault Lozier, who is technical product manager for uh, security, will not be with us uh, tonight. Um, so before I start, uh, a few uh, information about the organization. We are going to uh, be together for approximately um, 45 minutes. We are keeping um, uh, at the end of the session, sometimes to address the question and answers uh, and uh, question and answer them. Uh, so feel free, uh, if you have questions during the session, feel free to use the Q&A um, tab. Uh, you are able to post your questions uh, whenever possible. Uh, we will address them directly uh, on the go. Uh, and if not, at the end of the session. Uh, what else? Um, we are going to be covering some uh, deep, different topic, uh, the, so the key features, the key evolution with this version, and we are going to demo the first two main ones, uh, the eraser coding, uh, eraser coding to tape capability, and the data software encryption feature. Uh, the rest, the quota on the repository, the new cap the new task to copy um, disk uh, disk uh, content uh, to tape, uh, the ability to hide metadata, and all the other evolutions regarding new storages, new operating system, and so on. The, the other one are going to be uh, uh, described without a demonstration. Um, so, uh, without further ado, let's move forward with uh, with the first uh, feature. We are going to talk about eraser coding to tape. And um, before I give um, the floor to uh, Mathieu, I'm going to uh, maybe describe a little uh, the the. Um, the background for this feature. We developed this type of um, red type uh, storage management over tape uh, to address some requests from a cloud storage provider uh, wanting to implement um, uh, cold storage services similar to Glacier. Uh, so be able to archive data on a very resilient storage and very compact storage. So uh, something able to store very large volume of data um, over different location. Currently, this feature is still a beta feature. Um, it requires some professional services to deploy uh, and to configure. So. Um, if you're interested in that, please reach out to us before, prior to configuring it on your own. Um, now, that is the current status with the version, but we we uh, we have in we have working we are working to develop that and make this um, eraser coding to tape available for all type of use cases um, and make it a good fit for for enterprise usage research uh, department and so on. If you're interested in in using that in your environment in an enterprise use case uh, versus the cloud service provider use case, please. Um, uh, reach out um, and, and let us know what you are looking for, why and how. Uh, this is a good moment now, this is a good time uh, to help us design the best uh, possible feature that would match your need. So please reach out to product management at Atempo uh, to help us uh, design this uh, in the right direction for, for you. Um, I think I said it all, Mathieu, uh, so please uh, take it away and, and uh, explain what it is about. Yes, uh, thank you, Armel, with pleasure. And uh, good day, everyone. So we're getting a recording to tape. Uh, here is a little chart that will explain, I hope, clearly uh, one of the main benefits. Uh, this is the storage footprint. If we take uh, at the left a single copy to tape, okay, we've got one footprint. When you want to uh, have a dual copy to tape, you will multiply by two this footprint. 
and uh, you can uh, write to tap in a Y scheme, okay, with, uh, for example, two data centers and uh, with a tape library uh, within uh, each of them. And, uh, but with three data centers, we can achieve uh, something that is quite wiser and uh, we may optimize uh, the footprint. So, uh, how does it work? We will slice uh, the data in four parts, four chunks of data. And then aside this, we will compute two uh, control blocks or parity blocks. It means that the overhead is 50% uh, uh, instead of 100. So the saving is obviously 50%. Uh, regarding the RESO coding, the canonical scheme is four plus two. So we do slice in four and we add two parity chunks. Uh, regarding this formula, uh, we may extend it to something like this, like 8 plus 4, uh, 12 plus 6, you name it. So we've got here some example at the, at the, um, the, the bottom of, the, of this chart, uh, taking uh, an example with uh, 2000 terabyte job using uh, LTO8 media. So you see that we've got here uh, for a single copy to tape 21 media, obviously the double, so 42 of them uh, uh, with a dual copy to tape and uh, uh, the cost is just multiplied by two. But here we're getting errors recording, we've got only only 31, uh, 31 sorry, of them, so 10 uh, LTO8 tapes are saved. And uh, we've got a, uh, a saving uh, that is uh, the cost of 10 uh, uh, LTO8 tapes and the storage footprint. And you know that with, within a, a cloud service provider, a tape population, you've got a huge amount of tape. And here you will save, let's say, 50% uh, of the overhead. So next slide, please. Thank you. So here, this is the topology we will demonstrate. We've got uh, a Maria server with a data mover on each location and uh, on the three locations, site one, two, and three, we've got a data mover aside uh, uh, a tape library featuring uh, four tape drives. Uh, one of the main benefits aside the, the cost savings is the resiliency and especially the disaster uh, tolerance. Because even if you lose one of the three locations in case of uh, uh, a fire, uh, a flood, earthquake, whatever, you will still be able to recover all the data using the parity chunks and the, the data will be safe and the production as well. So let's go to the next slide with the demo. So here we've got the Miria 4.2 dashboard. We first go to the media manager. seems it's a bit stuck here. Oh yeah. Okay, here we've got displayed the three uh, tape libraries on the, each of them on one location. Each of them does feature uh, four drives and here we see all the cartridges within. Okay. So next thing is the data mover. We've got three of them, one on each location. We've got an FSC for the rebuild, okay, on exception only. Uh, we will need this to recover the data. Here, this is the media manager SMC with the archiving, with the special sign uh, um, 
that the that says that it's error recording. We've got the tap cache disk on each of the data mover, and here uh, once again our error recording scheme that is 12 plus 6, and we can configure and see how, how it is configured. We've got four uh, chunks of data on each locations and two parity chunks on in each location. So we go then to the parameters and see within the default settings and jobs global. Uh, this is here that we will state the errors coding proxy location. So EC rebuild. And once again, this FSC will be used only on exception. I mean, if there are some missing chunks only. So let's create now uh, a project from the beginning. So new project, we type in a name, EC demo, it will do the job. So then we put a name on the task itself. We get a source. Here we've got a small data set on the first uh, data mover. We assign a target, a repository target, and a, a specific policy, EC policy. Here we will choose among data within data, a data set. Uh, we've got here roughly 100 files, one megabyte uh, each for each of them. We can assign some scheduling, but here this is not the case. And we have uh, our task and project that is correctly uh, created. So we may start it right away. So we do start all tasks. And so we will witness uh, the job uh, beginning. So we've got the, the main job here in blue. OK, so it did create the tap cache disk on each of the data movers. Here we look uh, quickly at the logs and we witness that we've got all, already many chunks, so uh, namely 18 of them. 12 plus 6 and here it's uh, already busy uh, writing on the tapes and we see all the chunks here so it was really really fast we will wait for a few seconds more uh, for the job to finish okay and now we will go back to the archiving project okay everything is complete here at the bottom and we will have a look once again within applications at the media manager and see that we've got uh, six steps on each location that are assigned with data. OK, so this is the end of the demo. And the next topic, uh, the data at rest encryption will be covered by my colleague Renaud. Thank you, Mathieu. You're welcome. So um, here we have um, yeah, uh, more and more um, demand on security. So we see a high, more and more high demand on, on uh, higher security. And um, we provided that feature that was requested largely by our several customers, which is data encryption at rest. So this feature brings mainly confidentiality of the data stored by doing um, en encryption on the destination storage. It's fully managed by Miria, and we have implemented the highest standards in terms of security. Um, this feature brings in two modes, so we can or manage uh, manual certificates, generate manual certificates and upload them in the Miria interface. Uh, we are able to import them and to serve as basic key for data encryption later. Uh, or we have the other way, which is using uh, KMS, um, spelled for key management system. And um, in this version of Miria, we implemented the one from Thales, as you can see on, on the screen. So the, the um, uh, KMS from Thales is named, uh, is called Cypher Trust Manager. And um, this integration provides, of course, uh, data security and provide the highest level of security. 
those appliance usually comes with uh, hardware security uh, modules, so what we call HSM. So Miria managed Miria enables globally to manage different security rules uh, through uh, uh, and to and bring advantage in the in the fact that there is um, flexibility uh, where you can apply them to several elements uh, or in the user interface. So you can define what where you want to apply the right level of security to thanks to those rules. And that way define if you want to encrypt a specific folder for user or encrypt globally the solution. So uh, you will have this flexibility and we will see it through the, the demonstration that we have. So uh, the encryption support any types of storages. So you are able to uh, whether send it to uh, object storage, disk or tape. And uh, it's possible to combine the encryption address with our advanced network layer, uh, which is basically encryption on transit and enables you to do the complete end to end encryption. So both functionality can bring a, a high level of security uh, to enable you to perform an end to end encryptions for your data. What we will see on the next slide is basically um, a use case from a customer. Um, so the, the the requirement was basically here to be able to outsource the data to the cloud. And the challenge here was to provide that in a very secured way. Um, so uh, they had an um, on-premise site and the objective was to send all the files to one or several clouds uh, destinations. So uh, in this schema, uh, it's relatively simple as you can see. So we will read the data from uh, that is locally located from the first data mover. And once the data has been retrieved, we will uh, then retrieve the certificate from either the KMS or the certificates uh, that have been imported manually in this case. And from those, the keys of these certificates, we will gen then generate an encryption key for each piece of data. And there's also um, ability to have um, a rotation of encryption keys uh, that will be done automatically for every seven gigabyte of um, of data. So this is a config, it's a um, configurable option, but uh, this this was applied by following the best practices of the market and specifically ANSI. So the the data uh, will be uh, encrypted at source. Uh, at, at the source data mover and then being sent to the target data mover and directly then uh, um, written into the bucket. So, and as we said before, this ability on top of that to protect the data on transit with our uh, advanced network layer ANL uh, feature on, on top of it. So we have uh, right now a demonstration that shows a little bit how we can configure uh, the data uh, address encryption in our solution. So let's let's go through this demonstration. So as you can see, the um, from our dashboard we have a security tab and we can enter the data encryption uh, um, up menu. From there we are able to upload a first. Uh, authority certificate so we will be looking at it on the um, folders and then upload and we can upload the next child certificate so provide another name for it and uh, select the child certificate from it so uh, with those two certificates uploaded, we are now able to create an encryption policy. So this encryption policy will be used and it's where there, there that we define the algorithm, the length and the key rotation, as you can see that is configurable. 
After that, we can define an encryption rule, which is the combination of that encryption policy and uh, whether the certificate or the KMS. So we can define several encryption rules. And uh, as you can see, uh, define encryption rule with a mix of uh, different encryption rule that can enable you to manage different kind of uh, level of securities with whether KMS or certificates. Now we enter at the uh, repository level and we can at this level assign the security rule that we ju just had been creating, that encryption rule. And from there we can save changes and now if we move um, data from this repository, it will be automatically uh, encrypted. So we see that we are starting a task and we can follow the different actions. So every uh, data that comes to this repository will be automatically encrypted with these rules. So, um, and, uh, and the user will then be able to, to encrypt it. So this is a second video uh, that we are showing just after where we are able to restore data. So when we move, yeah. So that's that's a part where user will be able to restore their information. So let's, let's move to the repository. We go back to the re repository itself and we want, for example, to restore a specific file from that repository. So we select that file and we are here able to retrieve this data on this on original location. And what we will need here, of course, is um, the certificate, initial certificate. So we get a warning uh, showing that we need to perform an action as a user on that on that job. And the action is a validation where you will need, to, of course, to select the certificate to restore that data and to add a passphrase. As soon as those operations are done, the uh, system will automatically validate and restore the information and store the data uh, encrypted on the destination folder. And so this this stops a little bit the demonstration of uh, our capabilities and the configuration of the data encryption. Okay, thank you, Renaud. Uh, we are going to move forward with the other feature within uh, Miria 4.2. And I'm going to um, ask Mathieu to explain uh, what the new quota management system uh, is bringing to 4.2. Mathieu, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Armel. So we're getting the, the repository level quota management is quite an interesting feature. So you may uh, set uh, a quota limit to some group or users. Uh, and um, so they, they will be able to achieve uh, archiving or backup up to, uh, for example, here uh, on this example, uh, 400 uh, terabyte and uh, after uh, when this quota is attained uh, they will not be able uh, to achieve anymore uh, it, it it will apply to a specific user or a specific group of user or specific team as well and uh, the good news is that everything is dynamic so if you need uh, to uh, increase the quota it is uh, really it is possible within seconds and uh, it will uh, be applied right away and then uh, archiving may resume quite quickly uh, this uh, quota can be set uh, through uh, the web ui and as well using the rest api uh, we've got uh, two main commands one is to set and one is to get the result. So next slide, please. Okay, another uh, new feature 
uh, on Maya 4.2 is the new copy to tab task. So you already know the FSC. Uh, so this is a disk to disk copy. I mean, archive or backup. And here we will uh, complete this iteration with uh, a second milestone that is the tape. The tape will produce uh, air gap, okay, and uh, it will mitigate uh, some threat uh, that are nowadays uh, in the air. And uh, especially you can have uh, the, the tapes offline, so it will be way more secure and uh, away from some ransomwares or crypto lockers and so on. Regarding the job itself, uh, the main goal is to have a specific retention that will be longer. For example, you will have uh, some months to disk and then five years, for example, on the tapes. And it is as well triggered by the specific schedule that is not correlated uh, in any way uh, to the disk-to-disk uh, -disk schedule. So we may go to the next slide. Yes. So here uh, you've got uh, more details on the disk-to-disk, uh, -disk, so the file storage container. Uh, P1 is, for example, uh, a full backup, and then P2 to P5 are some incrementals. And we've got here one year retention. So next slide, please. So aside this, we may copy all this data to tape. So namely the P1 to P5, okay? So we do collect all the big PAX files and we write them directly to tape with a way longer retention. Here in this example, this is five years. And the good news is that Everything is granular. You may restore and retrieve some individual file when there is a need. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay. As part of our support of Microsoft Azure, so the V2, we will introduce uh, immutable blob support. So, uh, you know already immutability, and here this is a time-based retention of data. You cannot alter or delete data in any way during all the retention period. Here you can only lock a policy, so this is uh, something we may compare to uh, the compliance mode in S3. Uh, that is already present uh, within Maria for a while. Here, you cannot override uh, the lock. Even with a super user or something like this, this is a full compliance mode. And uh, you cannot alter data in any way uh, before the end of the retention period. A legal old flag does exist at the object level we will not uh, be able to set it within Maria, but if it is present at the source, we will propagate this uh, uh, flag at the destination, for example, uh, within a migration. Next slide, please. Okay, here we have the ability to hide the metadata from the web UI. We've got, uh, we've got by default some uh, quite interesting metadata like Finite Code Pro, MXF, and so on. These are mainly aimed to uh, the media and entertainment verticals. If you are using media out of uh, this uh, kind of industry, you can, of course, uh, create and set uh, some personal or, or or specific metadata on your own. But here you can now uh, as well act on the 
default metadata and hide a subset of them or all of them if you need. So you get a filtered view of the metadata structure that is uh, easier uh, to use and to maintain. Next slide, please. Okay. And uh, Renaud, can you tell us maybe a bit more regarding the public REST API? Yeah. So thank you, thank you Mathieu. So during the last versions of uh, Miria, we did uh, regular updates on, on the public REST API. So the objective was to cover the, the full um, ability, capabilities of the web UI through REST API and to deliver that in a, a complete Swagger UI, to a complete documented uh, UI. So the reason for that is, uh, and the benefits are, of course, uh, it's an enabler for most of our um, partners and and, um, and cloud service provider who, who need Miria to to be integrated and uh, easily integrated. So the the achievement of the full scope of the functionalities of a REST API through our web uh, to, to, from uh, from our web UI through the REST API was an important enabler for them and we had to provide this and uh, we are to a step now where we are improving it uh, but the full full coverage uh, is done thank you Renaud uh, so regarding the rest of the uh, enhancement and evolution um, you you will see in the release note that we have added the capability to do uh, to select multiple files or multiple object folders and so on from the easy move interface uh, within the, the the web uh, ui you now also have the ability to filter the view um, that's available for you the user from easy move browse uh, from the web ui but also from the rest api so it match what the user sees at the file system level we are of course with this version adding new support for new storages here support for azure netapp files over nfs version 3 we are also adding, as you see on the right, support for Ooglu, uh, which is a cloud storage. We are adding support for new operating system version, Red Hat Linux 9, uh, also SUSE Linux version 12, version 15, uh, Kylin version 10. Uh, we are adding extended support attribute, extended attribute support, sorry, for PanFS. Uh, we are also uh, describing PanFS as uh, in the section of the shared file system within Miria configuration interface. And something that's been uh, requested for by by several uh, cloud service provider and customers support for NFS version four extended attributes. And with that, we have finished our presentation. We are going to cover the, the question that's been asked during the, the session. Um, so if I switch to the Q&A uh, tab, um, <clears throat> let's start with uh, the quota, for, for instance. There is a question here asking, uh, can I set a quota for a specific team? Uh, yes, of course. As already mentioned, uh, you may. Uh, set a quota for a specific user, a group of user, or even a team that you may create. Yes. Okay. I'm going to switch to uh, encryption. We have several questions related to uh, Miria new uh, ability to encrypt data. Uh, there's one that says, can I use my homemade certificates? So Miria encrypt data at rest. Uh, Renaud, we don't hear you. Your mic is mute. Yeah, the answer is yes. You can. Uh, you have the flexibility to use your own manual, manually created certificates, and uh, of course, you upload them in Miria to manage your complete encryption at rest. So, so you you can use that by default. Sure. Okay. So while we are talking about encryption, there's another one that's um, asking about the different algorithm that we are using for encryption. Yep. Yeah. So the algorithm that we are using are a AES, ARIA, and Sasha 20 uh, with different encryption lengths, so 128, 192, and 
two more questions here. Please do not hesitate to ask other questions while we are uh, answering this one. Um, this one are on error recording. Um, there's one question which is also about uh, the algorithm. So what type of algorithm are we using for the error recording? Uh, so this is uh, Reed Solomon algorithm, and the name of it, uh, we did choose uh, uh, an industry standard on the market that is called Leopard. Okay, still about erasure coding. Uh, someone is doing backup to two different targets, um, and is asking what type of benefits can I can I get if using a riser coding to a single type library instead of the backup to two targets? Uh, so obviously the, the main benefit will be the, the footprint, the data footprint, because uh, if we compare once again uh, um, uh, a double copy in a Y where you will have twice the footprint here, uh, using error coding with a canonical 4 plus 2 uh, or derivate uh, scheme, uh, you will achieve uh, a 150 uh, percent uh, footprint instead of 200. So you will save uh, 50 percent. Still, uh, because you you are uh, only you have only one tape library and only one location, you will not be able uh, to uh, survive uh, a disaster. But still, the, the footprint will be lower and you will achieve uh, great savings and lower TCO. Okay, thank you. No more You're questions welcome. here. So we are going to wrap this up. I'm going to thank you on behalf of my colleagues for your attention and showing off. You will receive um, uh, an email with a recording of this session. Um, once again, if you are interested in um, in participating to the uh, process of defining the Radio Coding feature, uh, reach out to, to us using this email pm at atempo.com. Uh, if you have questions also, you can reach out to, uh, to the team uh, in the US or to us directly as you want. Um, it's been a pleasure and uh, uh, we are looking forward to, um, to um, the uh, a new version coming uh, at the end of March, so 4.2.2 uh, evolutions. Um, have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye, everyone.